never been part of a conspiracy, but I'm starting to think this is what it must feel like to be on the outside of it. You're ever thinking this, either wear the jersey or get off the field. You need to tell me what happened to you. I can't defend you. Do you understand that? You asked me to set fire to this place, but I'm still sitting. Maybe he's guilty. Maybe he is. We're doing our job. I'm not welcome home. That's not a part of my job. If I'm wrong, when it comes to my reckoning, I'm the one that'll have to answer for it. What makes you think you're any better than the rest of us? I don't think I'm better than anybody else. That is the point. Mr. Slahi, would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? The Mauritanian. I was like, what that background? You got you got a Tahar Rahim head behind you. I was like, how'd you manage that? Rory, Sarab, Jeff in Las Vegas, good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for talking about the Mauritanian today. Uh, what a powerful film. I mean, it's a film that sticks with you, that uh, you know, influences you and uh, an important message. So I uh, just wanted to say, first of all, congratulations on a gripping drama. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thanks for having the time. Uh, and Rory, let's begin with you. How do you write a screenplay with more than one writer? How, how does that process work? Uh, well, um, you know, I don't know. We've been doing it for so long. I, I, I don't know necessarily how you do it the other way. Uh, I think for us, we, you know, the process is really just about talking it out, hashing out the ideas, making sure this is solid. And I think having the kind of multiple perspectives really helps us do that. And so when we, when we deliver a script, it really feels a, a lot more kind of like it's been, the tires have been kicked a lot more. Um, but yeah, we, you, we've been writing together for a long time. So, so, um, so there's, it's almost the opposite for me. I'm like, how do you do it on your own? I don't get it. And so Rob, was there a delicate balance between dramatic license and the facts? Because this is, you know, for entertainment, it's not a documentary. No, I mean, we, I mean, everything in the movie comes from reality for the most, yeah. It's basic. the hardest part about this movie was editing stuff out. There are so many, there was, you know, you're, we're, we were actually covering a lot of time. Uh, we're covering over 14 years. And so a lot of it was about what, what, what we got to keep in and what, what we had to take out because there just wasn't enough time. One of the, you know, one of the hardest things was Muhammadu had an incredible relationship with his guard, Steve, who's actually in the movie, but very, he's a very small character in the movie, but that relationship could have been its own movie. They had, I mean, there's been New Yorker articles about that relationship and it's an extraordinary friendship that developed while Mohamedou was in, in Guantanamo. And so- You do see that, yeah. You see yeah. that in the beginning, just a little bit, but then towards the end, they're, all, they're calling each other by their first name and you knew something happened and over those years that we just got a small taste of, but I did notice that. Yeah, I mean, it was really hard because there, I mean, Steve visited Mohamedou in Mauritania after, after he was released. I mean, no that's kidding. how close a friend Wow. He became. And so like, it's not, it wasn't just like a buddies in jail type thing, guard and, and prisoner. They, became, they had a real friendship. And the fact that we couldn't include that in the movie was a little heartbreaking, but um, we knew that we had a responsibility to kind of just tell this, tell the story that we were trying to tell. Because if we tried to tell everything, then it wouldn't be entertaining. It wouldn't, it would be confusing. It would be, you know, a movie isn't just a list of events that happens to someone. And so we had to make sure we had to shape it and include Nancy's story and include Stuart's story as well. Absolutely. And Rory, I'm assuming, you're, assuming your adaptation began with the Guantanamo Bay uh, diary as a foundation for the screenplay? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, when we came on board, there had already been a few writers that already had kind of different interpretations of it, uh, a few different versions. Um, so, and Kevin was already attached. And so there was certainly, in it, there was already a sort of directional element um, but in place, uh, but yes, we, you know, look, we research is a massive part of our writing process. Um, so having Mohamedou's book was obviously just an incredible sort of resource. Uh, having Mohamedou to pick up the phone and call him, uh, Nancy as well, uh, you know, um, was part of it. But, but, but finding the reality, digging into the reality was definitely the first step. And then trying to shape that, to Sir Rob's point, into a story, into a singular sort of like, uh, story that that is not only speaks to the truth but is also entertaining and emotionally engaging for sure and so rob did 
was there much discussion on the torture descriptions? Because I know it was taken from transcripts. It was all based in reality, but you know, it was, it was very difficult to watch. And I assume it was difficult to read and, and write about. Yeah, I mean, the torture, we talked a lot about it with Kevin and with actually with Muhammadu as well. You know, one of the things that we, I mean, everything in the torture happened to him that's in the movie. There's nothing in it that didn't happen. Um, I think the one thing that we really tried to focus on a little bit was actually where Muhammadu was mentally in those moments and the hallucinations that he had, those were real. That was, that was what we got from speaking to him that he had, you know, he, he had a hallucination that his mother was in the cell, his cell with him. He, at one point he jumped off his uh, cot thinking he could fly, you know, because he was, uh, he wasn't allowed to sleep for 70 days. I mean, wow. can you imagine that? Um, and so that's, I think for us, it really became about like trying to, you know, you have a little, that little mini sequence and, and seeing him step-by-step step being broken down, not just physically, but mentally as well. That, that was really important to us to get across. And, and Rory, did uh, Jodie Foster bring her ideas to the script too? Oh, I mean, of course, there's, there's a reason why Jodie Foster is Jodie Foster. You know, she's not just someone who sort of turns up and clocks in and clocks out. She's an incredible professional with an incredible, I mean, obviously talent, but also dedicated to her craft and years of experience to draw from, you know, in some of the most iconic roles in movie history. So to be honest, it's more about, you know, you're upping your game to hope that she doesn't turn around and be like, what the hell is this? You know? <laughs> um, so, and, but, yeah, but knowing that someone like Jody uh, is in the movie gives you an incredible license as a, as a writer, because you know that she, she can do it. It's not a question of, Oh, is this scene going to hold up? Well, you know, Jodie Foster's in it. So yeah, it'll be fine. You know, it's just, it's fighting good enough to match what she's going to deliver really. Um, so, so that was always uh, an exciting thing to do. And the same, of course, for goes for Taha, who we're both incredible fans of and uh, Benedict and Shailene, who all sort of, you know, inspired us uh, as well. So. And finally today, so Rob, uh, it, you talked about there was so much you couldn't put in the movie, but Kevin McDonald's has talked about wanting to release a longer edition. So does an extended cut exist? I don't know. Uh, you'd have to ask Kevin that. I think I'm sure it does. <laughs> We've saw multiple cuts and that were longer, and some of it is like, oh, you got to take that out. But I, under, you know, at the end of the day, he's, he's the director, and he's got to he's got to present his vision. And and he didn't have an easy job, you know. Like he, you know, I I wouldn't have wanted to be in his shoes, having to choose which kind of which one of his babies he's got to take out of the movie. And, and there's some scenes that. I'm sure he loved ended up on the cutting room floor. I know there's some of my my favorite scenes did, and 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 I don't blame Kevin for that. I think he had to do those things to make it make the movie work. Well, you know? a difficult job too, condensing 20 years of a man's life into a two-hour movie. Yeah. So I, that's an impossible task too. Incredibly difficult. Well, but end result is incredible. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Congratulations, and when you have a chance, come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. Oh yeah, of course. Love Las Vegas. <laughs> awesome, guys. Congratulations. Thanks for your time. Yeah, for you. <laughs>